Well, good day. It's the 28th day of June already, 2021. I hope you're having a great day. Very humid here in uh, Virginia. Received a question from uh, uh, on the uh, on my email. I just won't identify who gave it, but it's a good question. It's the first time I have ever seen this, and it's on the Secret Service Uniform Division uh, job vacancy announcement. It's called a Continuing Service Agreement. And again, I've never seen this in federal. I've seen it in state and local. And actually there was a job I was interested in, me, uh, magistrate position in Virginia. And it says, you know, if you drop out of the job, uh, you have to reimburse the, the state for your training. And the reason for that, of course, is the magistrates, you know, we set bail and do things like that, but you have to work, you know, you're on call 24 seven and you do shift work. And a lot of people don't want that job or, they decide they don't want it after they're in. But this is the first time I've ever seen it in a federal law enforcement uh, vacancy announcement. I've known a lot of people who have left agencies, gone to other agencies, never had a problem. Again, this is the first time. So let's take a look at that and then I'll come back and talk to you about it. Okay, so this is gonna be what is a continuing service agreement, what they are, and how they affect federal law enforcement officers. This is from the Secret Service's uh, current vacancy announcement for uniform division. And you'll see here there's just a lot of information on it, but in bold, and this was not there before, so they must have just put this in, because I look at these pretty closely. It says applicants selected for this position will be required to sign a continuing service agreement before being assigned to an initial training class. The continuing service agreement will commit the applicant to a specified period of employment with the U.S. Secret Service upon successful completion of training. Now, why in the world would they do this? Well, <laughs> number one, to reduce turnover, okay? Number two, the recognition that many applicants have applied to multiple agencies. And thirdly, and most realistically, you know, I'm going to speak against the Secret Service. I'm not speaking against anything. I think I'm telling the truth. That's what I'm trying to do. The job is not great, okay? You're in a uniform. You're standing post at the vice president's house. That involves nights. That involves holidays. That involves overtime. And again, when a lot of these websites show these, they show people running around with guns and climbing out of helicopters. What you are is a security guard. Now, you're a security guard for the president, granted but you're still a security guard, okay? So uh, yes, you have, you're more than a security guard in that you have powers of arrest. You're a highly vetted security guard. But bear in mind that, you know, it is a security job and that may or may not, you know, be your cup of tea. And if it isn't, then uh, I think if you're thinking of applying or have applied, you'd wanna find out what the requirements are. Now, what if you drop out anyway? You know, what if I leave before the minimum service? Well, you may be required to reimburse the agency for your training. Uh -oh. That's what the Commonwealth does if you uh, leave the, the magistrate service within three years. <laughs> it's kind of like an indentured service. You know, that's, I, think, I think this is the, the, the state or the Commonwealth where indentured service started and they use it for their judicial officers, okay? You also may receive a negative recommendation from the Secret Service, that's the only ones I know that do this. Maybe the Capitol Police are gonna do it. I don't know. And third, uh, if your leaving is non-voluntary, if it's medical, if you're unable to pass training, uh, you just decide this is not for you, then this should not apply. Okay, this applies after you've successfully completed training. So if you drop out of the training because your knee's blown out, or you, know, you say, this isn't for me, you know, and you wanna get a job with the I don't know, the Forest Service. I don't, I don't think they're gonna come looking for you then. Uh, this is for people that finish the training, go to the White House or the Vice President's house or Bill Clinton's house. Seriously, I mean, he's got a guard shack and the girl that he lives with comes out and brings you cookies from what I understand. <laughs> but <laughs> That's not too bad, but you know, it's, I don't know. You know it is what it is. Uh, but there you go, you know, so uh, uh, if you quit, you know, they, they're not going to be happy campers and uh, they want to make sure you're not going to quit. 
So there you have it. Sometimes it's good news and sometimes it's bad news and sometimes it's no news. This is probably bad news if you're applying to that particular agency. I would also check the U.S. Capitol Police. Now what I just noticed on the U.S. Capitol Police website is a notice about military discharges. And this is important. Uh, and the reason it's important, and the, the next video I'm going to do it, and then I'm going to do the one on the FBI. It's going to be on military discharge types and how to upgrade your discharge. And um, again, there's a very small percentage of us who are veterans. It's about 7%. Now, when I was growing up, it was over 50% of the male population. Why? Because of World War II. But all those folks have died except for about half a million. About 13 million were in the military, and we're down to about half a million left, and they're in their 90s. And since then, and particularly since the all-volunteer military, it, it's pretty much shifted to a very small demographic who volunteer and serve their time and do time in the military. And a lot of people outside the military don't understand the military. Okay, they don't understand what military discharges are. They don't understand military life is like. I've seen local agencies, my local sheriff's department, confused about RE codes. They don't. They think it's a secret code or something. So again, a lot of people don't know anything about the military, and you have a lot of these civilians who've watched every war movie, stupid movie that they've seen, and they think they know something about the military. They really don't, but they're making decisions about veterans based on something they don't know, okay? So the next one will be to enlighten, not just y'all, because I don't think y'all need to be enlightened, but if you could share the next one as widely as you can, because I don't see a lot of good ones on military discharges and how to upgrade your discharge. Most of them, they want you to go to a, a lawyer and spend money, but I've looked at this process very carefully. I've helped people to do it, and um, so anyway, that's my next video. So have a good day. And if you don't care about military discharges, don't watch it at all. And uh, the next one then after that will be on the FBI and trust. Okay, so have a good day and thank you for watching.